Okay, I have 3.30, so I think we'll get started. Um, thank you all for coming today to the Acquisitions Interest Group meeting. Um, I just wanted to um, share our sponsors, uh, our Emerald, Equinox, and Mobius. Um, and I will hand it over to uh, Tiffany to lead our discussion. Thank you, Elizabeth. All right, I'm going to try and share my screen without breaking everything. So, one second. Um, actually, no, no, I, I, I did break it. One second. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put this over here. And you guys are here. Okay. All right. Can you guys see my screen okay? Okay, cool. I had to decide which monitor to put it on um, because apparently my office is super dark. So I have like a ring light up here that like covers like half my screen. So um, I want to actually be able to see what I'm showing you guys. <laughs> um, okay, so I I figured uh, since this is our June um, meeting, we could do like a really quick um, <clears throat> look over some of the act bugs like we normally do, and then. I have like a um, like a just a topic to get us started, but mostly open discussion. So if there's something that you guys want to talk about, um, like Kate was saying that she's kind of just looking over things, um, so she's a little new to things. So if anybody has any questions that you want to, um, yes, I will zoom. Um, if you want to um, just ask the general collective knowledge, um, zoom, 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 zoom. How's that? Is that better? Or you want me to do a little more? Okay. Let's, let's, no, that's, that's a little too much. There we go. All right. Okay. Let me know if that's still too small. Um, okay, cool. So there's a couple of new ones, mostly new ones. Um, not a lot updated in the past month. So, um, there's, uh, there's, one here, and I wanted to ask you guys who might remember. Um, so there's this one, which is basically like on the, am I gonna make everything big? Um, there we go. Woohoo. Um, which is just when you do the lark, load mark order record screen. Um, thank you, Jennifer. Um, it doesn't, and it just says ACK import error, which is extremely unhelpful. Um, so there's a couple actually branches um, to fix this. And I think one of them is from Jeff Davis. So, um, but I thought there was another bug about this as well, that the the uploading message was just super unhelpful, uh, but I couldn't remember. So if anybody remembers it or um, uh, anything like that, we could add that to this bug. Um, and I'm gonna confirm it because yes, that does happen. So, um, so there's this one, and this one, like I said, this one actually has a couple of maybe fixes. Um, so there's that one. Uh, and I'm just scanning through. So as always, you guys, you guys know me, um, just stop me. <laughs> so, okay, then we have, uh, this is, uh, can you tell I was doing invoices uh, the past week? Because there's a couple of invoice bugs that I, that I opened. So um, this was, as some of our libraries are doing fiscal year end, one of the reports that they do is finding um, if there are things that they have on closed invoices that they didn't receive. So the, the like ideal thing is, you know, when you're looking through your invoice, it says, I ordered three, I received three, and now they're invoicing me for three. Well, that like little, you know how many you received is kind of like it doesn't stand out very much so it's really easy to to look past so my wish list here was just to make that more obvious if there's a discrepancy between how many you're being invoiced for versus how many you received so um and ben kalish I, and so my original thing was just to mark it in red um but ben kalish said and that's a really good point that uh something not just color or not only color or whatever uh, would be helpful so it doesn't have to um, be more accessible. So 
there's that one. That one's new. So if anybody wants to confirm that one, if you think it's good. Um, then there is this one. So this is about adding a permission to govern fund rollover. So as of right now, um, doing year end closeout, the only permission that governs whether you can do that is just like admin fund, which seemed super generic. <laughs> and um, so when you do close out, it's, it's really like you closed out, uh, you're, you're done. So I kind of wanted something more specific than just the same people who might be um, using funds to have the permission to do that. So this is just, let's add a fund so that we can sort of narrow down who has the ability to do that. So that's what this is. And actually, um, we are implementing this. We have this on our production server at Pines right now. Um, and I'm going to try this out for our fiscal year end um, to where in this case, because I'm trying it and I wrote the patch for this, um, I'm going to do the rollover for our libraries, but they're going to do all like the big meat of the reports and everything. I'm just going to do like the double check behind them and be like, yeah, we're good and then close it out. So um, the the idea of this bug doesn't necessarily have to be that that strict, but just that there is um, more, more of a granular permission for that. So that's what this one is. And more invoices. Uh, invoice note, it's just a free text field. If you put more than one thing in it, it's really long, really fast. It's not that readable. Um, it would be nice if it was more like PO notes where you could have more than one of them in a list, especially because you start out if you have an EDI provider. Um, I'm using jargon, <laughs> uh, but if you have an EDI provider, then you already have one that you is like pre filled in, like the generated from an EDI message. So it would be nice if it was more like PO notes. And this one I opened literally today. This is just, uh, it is really annoying personally that um, delayed is also a cancel reason because that doesn't really work in my brain. It took me a long time to get used to that, um, that I was canceling a line item, but really it was back ordered. Um, so that took me a little while to get my brain around that. So basically this proposes that delayed should be its own status instead of being lumped in with just canceled um, and trying to like mix those two things together. So that's what this one is. Um, so does anybody have any questions or want to talk about any of those before I move along? Okay, cool. Um, let's see, can you tell me a little more about the order of record errors? So let's go back to that one. Here we go. Um, what, what would you like to know, Carolyn? Like about the bug or like what you, how you get the errors or like what, what's. If it's easier to verbalize your question, you can um, request access and we can give you mic permission. Um, Carolyn said the specifics about the bug itself. Um, so if. I recall correctly. Um, so when you do a an upload in load mark order records, if there's something uh, wrong uh, in your your uh, your bib record file, um, I mostly find it when you have holdings information like um, Jamie listed, like the fund code, the org unit. Um, uh, what else do I see? If the branch is not particular, is not correct, um, instead of telling you, hey, you're missing a branch or there's no, that branch isn't formatted correctly, it just says ACK import error, which is extremely unhelpful. So I think this bug is to give you more helpful errors. Does that help or does that answer the question?
the reason I ask is because when we upload large orders through acquisitions, we get an upload error, even though the file will wind up being uploaded correctly. So do you get the um, the same ACK import error, like where it specifically says that with like a pop up? And Jennifer added whether uh, do you, if you get the pop out or does it just time out and never show you that it's done. Because that is indeed another bug. <laughs> so Lindsay said my consortia uses EDI ordering where the PO is activated once the mark's uploaded. And we see these errors pretty frequently and they're defined in the PO. When you say they're defined in the PO, what do you mean? Oh, I see, I'm sorry. So like up at the, where the activate button is, it's like you have uh, you would over encumber your thing. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, I lost track of chat. Okay, so Carolyn said we get the pop up, but it typically says upload error while the window still shows it processing. So is everything right in your purchase order then, Carolyn? I don't know off the top of my head. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know why it would say upload error. Yeah. And then still be okay. Yeah, John was saying maybe it's a permissions thing. Um, and I know Kate asked a question up here. Let me scroll back. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, Kate said, is ACK workstation specific? For instance, if I did ACK work at my station, would a colleague be able to work on it as well? Um, I don't think so. Yeah. No. Um, they would just have to have the correct permissions to be able to do whatever you wanted them to be able to do. So like if you're working in a purchase order, um, but they don't have purchase order permissions or whatever it may be, or invoices. Um, they would just have to have the same permissions you do. Carolyn said it's odd because with smaller orders, and I'm sorry, I'm jumping around. Um, so if anybody has something to say about what Kate was saying, um, also you are all totally free to like get on and talk. <laughs> I don't have to be the only one talking. Um, but, um, so Carolyn, when you say big orders, how big are we talking? Like how many copies? Okay. So typically with, um, when we place when we place bigger orders, there are at least there are at least eighty plus items total, um, and this is usually when we place like the big fiction orders or nonfiction orders, especially for the branches, because we place all of those um, orders together in the same cart. We merge them all into one cart and we place it we place it in one order to keep it simplified. Um, and usually that adds up to at least eighty items, if not more. Sometimes sometimes it's a it's over a hundred. Um, and like I said, this has been a thing. It's to the point where when I was being trained for this position, uh, my predecessor actually explained to me that this error will pop up, but it's okay because here's what you can do to find your, your purchase order to activate it. So I don't, I don't think it was ever like, it was, ne I was never really explained as to why it was an issue. Like I've gotten, um, I've gotten like other errors where there was something wrong with my bid file and I had to go back and re-download my bib file after making uh, the corrections. Uh, but 
as far as this upload error for large orders, I, it was just, it was just never explained. I was just like, oh, okay. And I went through, I ended up making, you know, the multi-step process to uh, just go through acquisitions, go through and find the fi the purchase order through creation time. It, it was just always, it was always, always very odd. And I figured I'd ask just in case there was something I could do maybe to change it. And it very well may be a permission thing. I would have to ask um, one of our other, uh, one of my other colleagues here to look into that. Do you, um, when you do your uploads, the, the check, uh, check box at the bottom, the load items, uh, what is, what is it called? It's like load items. Load bibs and items. Thank yes. you. Do you do that one? Okay. Um, I think so, I was, yes. I was wondering because maybe there's something going on with that because that's also creating copies at the same time. So mm -hmm. maybe there's something freaking out about the copies creation. And that might, and that very well may be, there's a couple of things I could investigate. It might not, like I said, it might just be a unique thing. Um, it doesn't look like from what I've seen, can see in the chat, it doesn't look like other branches have had this specific issue, but then, you know, I don't know how many, I don't know how many branches total actually do um, acquisition or order through acquisitions. I know it's not a great many in our consortium. Um, I know our system does it, but I know there's a, there are maybe, maybe two or three other libraries in North Carolina that actually use acquisitions ordering. It's so it's, you know, <laughs> this is the only, this is the only time when I can really kind of delve into that particular question. One thing to check when you're looking at permissions mm -hmm. is that you have all the necessary cataloging permissions okay. because um, the mark loader does rely on the uh, cataloging permissions that you'd need to load mark and create copies and such. Mm -hmm. So that if you're missing a cataloging permission, that could be it. Um, really what you're describing though is the bug that I just put into the chat that we've seen for years, except we don't see the error message. Okay. It just doesn't load. Okay. Or doesn't complete. I see. That makes sense. And it's funny because I've gotten so used to seeing that error message that it's just like, oh, okay, the order's done. Time to go find it. <laughs> But uh, but thank you for uh, talking through this with me, and thank you for the uh, the advice. I will definitely look into it and see if there's anything I can do on my end, and maybe if there's something on my permissions that needs to be updated. And Lindsay also said in chat it could be um, network timeouts. So like we've seen that both with um, the load mark order records page, mm -hmm. and also just in purchase orders. Like if the purchase order itself is too big, um, like. 200 plus items not titles but items we see that where we can't even activate it just it's like it there's too much for it to eat <laughs> um and then on load mark order records um it will do the thing but it doesn't tell me that it did the thing because it just times out from reporting back to me on that page so so maybe that's uh, something in there too yeah, with um, I've, I have seen it with bigger purchase orders. When I actually go to activate them, uh, it will take a while for the page itself to load, and it will say, "Page not loading. Do you want to close it?" And I have to click it, you know, wait a couple times before it finally comes through. Uh, but I, but yeah, that's yeah, that's um, just that that's just probably just because of the size of the purchase order itself, and it. And this is something that, fingers crossed, we hope to see resolved as more of ACK moves to Angular um, because it's a lot of the dojo, the old dojo interfaces that just got ported from the desktop right into the web client that right. are causing these kind of slowness problems. Um, there's also a bug um, that uh, Blake reported um, about the invoice UI not loading. Um, so. Uh, there's definitely issues throughout the ACK Dojo interfaces to do with speed and size of invoices and POs. Okay, I see. So you're not alone. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> For sure, 100%. <laughs> And I think I think I missed something in the chat. One second, while I scroll back. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, uh, let's see. Kate said, does that mean that Bib uploads in, in regards to uh, sharing workload? Does that mean that Bib uploads are shared in ACK? I don't think so since it's the same uploader as regular batch, right? No, I don't think the uploads are shared, but once it's in a purchase order, then it's available to my knowledge. So uh, what I'm talking about is like if you batch load Bib records, there's no way to put that into a bucket and share those, or there's no way for the other to share that list of, you know, that list that comes up when you batch load the, the you know, queue? the queue. Yeah. And it says it, it put it on, on this TCN, you know, and it, that kind of thing. I can't, you can't share that with anybody and they can't get to that list anyway. And I know that that's a known bug, but I thought, I thought maybe an act it, worked but no well tiffany correct me if i'm wrong but anybody who has access to the purchase order should be able to click on the queue link and view the queue for that purchase order not just the person who loaded it but you have to be able to access the purchase order i believe so i mean i i know that i definitely can do that like i can't like if one of our libraries is like hey what's up with my queue i can't go find their queue unless i click on it through the purchase order. But if I if I click on it, I can access it. I don't know if that's because of my permission level or if that's just anybody can do that. That sounds promising. But, yeah. So, but I mean, as long as they have the the same, like Jennifer was saying, the same permission levels to see the, the purchase order as you do. Thank you. That's okay. And I thought there was a bug about being able to share cues, but I'm not seeing it yet. And like a uh, share cues. Yeah, I know we've talked across. about that a lot in, in the um, cataloging group. So I know that, you know, it's a known issue. We would, catalogers would, would certainly like that feature. And, and I would say, um, I mean, I could be wrong because everybody's workflow is different. But I mean, for like normal ACK work, I would say somebody does the upload, the like work in acquisitions really, once it's uploaded, like you don't really need the queue very often. Like you, you're working in the purchase order, you're working in um, searching uh, for the, the line items, you know, you're working on the invoices. So having access to their queue isn't as important most of the time, I would say. Or it's not the bulk of what you're doing. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking for. I want to upload it and then go on with my acquisition stuff, but I want to be able to share that queue with my cataloger so they can then work, you know, on that end of it. And Mary yeah. kind of gave me a little bit of insight here too. Yeah. In chat, so thank you. Did I miss anything that anybody said in chat? Um, Danielle did share that she gets the same error as Carolyn when items, when attached items have funds or locations that aren't associated with the PO vendor or the owner. So I don't know if that helps. I'm not sure whether or not that plays into it. Um, Cause we do, we do have the fun, uh, the, we do have our branches funds in, um, we have those like in evergreen, we have those set up before um, or right at the beginning of every fiscal year. It might be because it has some sort of discrepancy between the vendor and us. I'm not really sure what that could be though. Because we only do we only do acquisitions through um, Ingram. We don't we don't do acquisitions through any other vendor. Let's see, 
then Mary said, my libraries don't upload phones in the orders and they apply them on the purchase order after the upload. Yeah. I have, I have kind of a split um, with, with my libraries. Some of them do have them in the order and some of them apply them on the purchase order level, so. Thanks for sharing that bug, Jennifer. I didn't realize I, I put that bug in there. <laughs> That's the way it goes. The ghost of past you. Thank you. <laughs> I never remember which ones I've submitted and which ones somebody else has submitted. Um, there's also this one related to cues, um, which is the fact that you can see acquisitions cues for your entire consortium. So there's people wanting to share, but there's also we want to be able to limit act cues as well. <laughs> and if any of these bugs affect you, please go ahead and click on the little affects me too to add heat to them. Um, Cause that's one of the great things about talking about the bugs um, is if they affect you, we can get more attention to them. I know there's also out there, um, speaking of, of cues, uh, where um, in the in the drop down for like bibliographic cues, authority, and ACK, nothing comes up when you choose ACK, like the grid doesn't exist. So all of the ACK cues are just interspersed in with your bib cues. So I know that's out there too. Did anybody else have anything on these? Thank you. Let me drag you over there. Aha, indeed. Thank you. Oh, and see, thank you, past me. It, it was me. <laughs> so thanks, Jennifer. So did anything have our does anyone have any other questions about these or anything that you just want to bring up? I figure open discussion can hop one way or another. So OK, if you do. Put it in the chat or interrupt me. Um, OK, so hearing none currently, uh, then the talking topic um, that I had was um, sort of an offshoot of the bug about um, a new, more granular permission for fund rollover. So um, Jennifer had the good idea when we were talking the other day. <laughs> she was like, I heard my name. Um, uh, that are there other places in acquisitions where you guys think that it should be a more granular permission to do something? And you don't, and I'm not asking, be like, yeah, I know that the permission um, to do this is admin fund or whatever. Like, no, you don't have to know what the actual permission is, but like something in acquisitions that you're like, eh, I think this one should be limited to not everyone should be able to do this. Um, so I was just wondering if there's any other places that you guys think that um, uh, it should be not, not as broad of permissions to be able to do a thing. And with acquisitions, when in doubt, assume that like the broadest possible permission is what's used right now. <laughs> um, and Tiffany, it relates to the first one that you have under the recently updated too, because that one's a permission issue. The 
this one, right? Okay, I saw you nod. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> Because in this case, there's actually no delete permission. It, it just doesn't exist. If you can view a pick list or, or create a pick list, you can delete, but only if it's your pick list. There's no delete line item perm anywhere. Okay, well, if that's a dead topic, we can do another one, you guys. Because <laughs> um, I do have one, kind of, that you guys made me think of. Um, all right. Does anybody have anything to say about the permissions thing? Because if you do, let's, let's do it. But if not, we can move on. And people can also bring it to the next meeting if you need time to think about it. Yeah, for sure. There are lots of duplicates. Why are you even here? Permission? You don't do anything. I also wish the permissions had better descriptions because the Aquans don't tend to have any description. You just have to guess based on the name. Oh, that's awesome, Lindsay. <laughs> no, no, Blake. Shh. <laughs> All right, if you think of any other permission stuff, say so. My other thing that I thought of that you guys made me think of is um, uh, since we have like a, a wider group here than like our, some of our monthly meetings, um, I was wondering if maybe we had some people here who are like Kate, bless you, I'm gonna call you out, who, well, though you don't have to respond, but I'm just gonna say your name, um, <laughs> who, um, are thinking about ACK or just started ACK or are overwhelmed by thinking about ACK? Um, and why are you overwhelmed? Or why are you just thinking about it? Or, you know, like, what is the holdup for you? Or what is the thing that is confusing to you? Um, so I'd be really interested to know because I just think it's interesting. Maybe other people hopefully think it's interesting. So, well, you said my name, and I can never. I did. I'm not gonna. <laughs> you, you were my example. You don't actually have to respond if you don't want to. <laughs> I can usually pretty talk about talk about something if I'm called to do so. Um, so for me, my number one fear is that there's actually money associated with it, and I think I've spoken to either you, Tiffany, or Jennifer before that you can kind of assign just an arbitrary number to something to a, an account, I suppose, or, you know, I don't even know the correct terminology. Um, we're not actually paying bills through ACK or anything like that, correct? And um, and then I, I guess, um, because you guys keep talking about large orders and stuff like that, and I can't, I mean, 200 items, that is not a large order, is it? <laughs> I, I'm worried about my, you know, am I going to need to, to uh, break them up into small, uh, you know, loads or something like that? And I, I, I really just, I want to look over somebody's shoulder for like three times, you know, when they order 
three times and then I think I could probably dive in. I don't know. Um, I, I'm not really sure why I'm, I'm so cautious, um, but a lot, I know a lot of it has to do with our accounting department, but um, I think we can circumvent that easily enough. <laughs> Blake says, let's order something. So yeah, I might be um, in somebody's inbox soon saying, hey, can you Zoom me if you are doing an order? I promise I won't like spend your money or anything. <laughs> so as far as the, oh, I'm sorry, Jennifer. I didn't mean to go uh, jump on you. super choppy Jennifer I yeah we got, we got none of that <laughs> <laughs> do you want to type it in chat for a second while I blather okay cool so um, I was gonna say um, so the 200 items um, is a little bit of a concern for me because um, like we do have big systems at Pines that that use um, acquisitions, but in general on one purchase order, um, I've recommended to try and stay under 200 because basically what happens is the system looks at each individual copy and it's checking like each, uh, like, okay, if you have a James Patterson title and you're ordering five copies of it, then it's going through each one of those where it's billed out to make sure that it's okay. And it just times out like it can't eat through that many things before it runs out of at a time. So, so are those five copies one thing or are they five things? Kind of. They're, okay. they're both one. They're both five things and they're also one thing. But that um, <laughs> counts towards the 200. Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah. So um, and that's that's been a concern for me because um, our biggest systems like Atlanta are not on Pines. So when Atlanta, um, if they ever wanted to join Pines, I don't know if I could reasonably tell them, you know, Atlanta, Fulton Library, that, you know, well, you can't order more than 200 items at a time. Um, so that's been a concern of mine. But most of my libraries keep it under 200 in general. So, and that also helps because sometimes it's slower. But, yeah. Yeah, that's concerning for me. I mean, I regularly have um, orders that are over 200 items. So now I have a new fear. Thanks, Tiffany. You're welcome. I, I live to serve. Um, well, what? okay, so it would depend on what your goals with acquisitions would be, right? Is it to um, just track your money, you know, about your encumbrances and things? Um, so, because you could maybe think of some alternative workflows. Um, that, that's a good point because um, that, I think maybe that is, <clears throat> excuse me, some of my reticence because I, I want, money has nothing to do with it as far as on, you know, with my workflow. Um, I want to um, have one central place where I have the order there, I can check I can check my packing slip against it. I can check my invoice against what I already checked my packing slip with, you know, um, instead of, you know, I, right now I just work on, I just have Excel files for every single order. And I'm assuming that's kind of generally what acquisitions would, would be like. Um, so I'm, I'm just, I want to be, I don't really know exactly what I want. I just want, an easier streamline. So maybe that's, you know, a goal of mine to pinpoint exactly what I, I want out of ACK. I mean, I think ACK would, would benefit you a lot there to have one central place and uh, a check against, like you said, your packing slips and stuff. Um, 
but I mean, if you do regularly do big orders, then it may be like a like a workflow shift. You know, do you order more often? Do you split your carts differently? Do you not combine carts? You know, like um, so there. From what it sounds like, it, it could be useful to you, but it would. It sounds like it would require some adjusting. So it would depend on if you're willing to do that or not. What are the odds of the future of ACK that we could get that to 300 items where it wouldn't be an issue? <laughs> what, what's the what's the big uh, you know pitfall there? What is it just takes long to load and it times out or? Um, I think it's twofold. Um, and I am extremely unofficially speaking here because I'm not like a developer, but so one of it is that it's still in Dojo, so it's really slow. And Angular should help that, I think. The other one is where it's doing the check. So when you load up your purchase order, it does some checks in the background to say, does everything have a branch? Does everything have a, or not a branch, but does everything have a price? You know, does everything have a fund? And then after it does all those, then it checks against your funds to see if you have enough money. Um, so, which if you're doing using play money, well then that's fine, but it's still doing the check either way. So I think what is happening is it goes one by one through each copy and I think what it should do is just grab all the funds that are used and do one check against each of those funds. So instead of using doing 200 checks, if you use even 10 funds in a purchase order, I think it should just do 10 checks, which I think would solve the issue of having of it timing out when you have too many copies. That's what I think is happening. <laughs> that may not be the case. <laughs> yeah, Danielle just said something. I mean, would it cuz we would never have um, different funds on one PO, if that makes sense. Like it would all be under one line item or what, what have you. So yeah, I, I wish there was a way to say, hey, I don't want you to necessarily check this. You can check all that if you want, but don't check this. <laughs> and even if you use one fund, because we have libraries that do that too. They only use one fund per purchase order. But if they have 200 items, it's checking that one fund again, I think 200 times instead of checking the fund once, which seems silly, but you know, maybe it's not, maybe I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> maybe that's not it. Well, the way things are going for me, it does seem like I probably won't actually be able to implement this until maybe Ag is on Angular. So I'll keep my fingers crossed. <laughs> Yeah, the, there's a lot of places in acquisitions where I think we're all hanging our hat. Then we're like, whenever that goes to Angular, it'll all work great. So um, go Angular. Hopefully that's the case. <laughs> Yeah, the, as Jennifer said, the, um, the purchase order work and line items. And I also think load mark order records is rolled into that as well, um, is um, I think in bug fixing. So hopefully in a soon-ish release. Sorry, I'm just reading chat to see if I missed anything while I was gabbing. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're talking about the limit, like the two to 200 limit, is that related to when you're trying to 
like it's a similar limit when you're trying to edit items. You shouldn't do, you know, batch load edits of more than 200. Um, is that a performance issue of the system? And if that, because there's like a bug that's getting fixed for that, will that impact positively on acquisitions? And does that question I, even make sense? <laughs> it does make sense, um, okay. but I don't know the answer. OK. I, like, I, I have a thought, but I have absolutely no basis to know whether I'm correct or not. So I don't want to say it. <laughs> OK, yeah, no, I was just. It kind of when they were asking about the 200, it kind of triggered in my head a reminder like, oh, they're they're working on the batch edit stuff for 3.8. Yeah. So, OK. Yeah, I hope that would be great. But. And Jennifer saying maybe as well, because they had um, a library doing batch changes that slowed everybody down. We have another couple minutes. Was anybody else um, act curious or that or uh, what you're worried about with act, I guess. Or any anybody that's worried. <laughs> you can share. Danielle said, I think it's similar. I have issues in batch upload with lots of records as well. Um, like with e-records, we try to keep it below 500 and upload or it could stall. And these don't have holding in so to weigh them down though. Ooh, another book. So this is the um, holdings editor one. Oh. When was this? So this is the new, where did it go? Farther down. Oh, okay, cool. So this is recent, six, eight, no, six, six. Cool. That would be good. Scroll back up. I'll just say in terms of hesitation for using acquisitions, acquisitions can't say that word today. Um, I think vocabulary really trips me up. Um, I don't work with it often. So um, that always kind of intimidates me. And I know in our consortium, we have people that use parts of acquisitions, but not the whole thing. So if you want to kind of dip your toe into it, but not <laughs> go the whole, you know, full dive, um, there are ways to do it. So is it that they have um, like different workflows, Elizabeth, or they just do like different, like, I don't know. Yeah, so we have some libraries that maybe use just the purchase orders. Um, Danielle, um, who's commented a few times, uses maybe the full thing. So it's just kind of, they use components of it. That's good to hear, because I think sometimes, um, when people think, well, maybe I should try out ACK, and then they investigate and they're like, oh, that's scary. I don't want to do all that. <laughs> so, and it doesn't necessarily have to be like that. And if I'm no longer choppy, can you hear me, Tiffany? I can hear okay. you. Um, I just want to say that, you know, when I started using acquisitions, well, when I started learning acquisitions, nobody else in Evergreen was using it. Um, I had no acquisitions experience in an actual library. Um, so if I can do it, any of you can, I promise. <laughs>
Yeah, Danielle said um, that they do use the financial part, but you don't have to. And that's totally true. I think I'd say probably most pieces of acquisitions, um, if you don't, if that's not useful to you, then you can go around it or not use it or whatever. Like it's a, it's a big bear, but you can use what's useful to you. Anita's like, yeah, let's do it. Oh. Pumped. And Kate says, um, can you use ACK but not EDI? 100%, you can. You can use uh, some providers, some vendors as EDI and some not. You can use all EDI, you can use no EDI. Uh, it's it's kind of whatever floats your boat. Well, I should say, not just that, but whatever is useful to you. How about, that's a, that's a better way to say that. You guys really have helped me, you know. I, I feel like it could be potentially something that I could put on my, to-do list, move, move it a little further up. I, especially if I could just see it in action a couple times. Um, so thank you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, if there's anybody that also is in that same situation that just wants to see what it looks like, um, I'm totally happy to do like a demo, I guess, of just like, not even the setup piece, because I can pre-do that, but like, this is what workflow looks like, which the, the caveat being, you know, yours may not look like this. Maybe you don't want to do that or whatever, but just like a demo workflow, I can do that one time at um, one of the ACK interest groups. I'll be there. Okay, very good. I'm going to hold you to it because if I show up and nobody's there, I'm very sad. <laughs> Yeah, Jennifer said, um, you don't have to be an ACT user to come to the monthly meetings. Um, all are welcome. And it is great um, if you are, even if you are not using ACT, just like we were talking here about why are you not or what are you worried about or like anything like that. That's all super useful, even to people who are currently using it. So everybody is welcome. That would be great. And Sarah's saying that um, some of the smaller vendors are not set up to order through EDI, but you can create the purchase orders in acquisitions and then um, order it so that at least you get the copies that are showing us on order. And then Jennifer has got a playlist here. So that's awesome. Um, let's see, Kate said, um, I can stick my toe in with just one of my vendors and yes, you totally could. Yeah. At least get, I, I'm a, I learn by like doing the thing. So, uh, just doing one of your vendors could work. You can also, um, if you have a test server, you could set it up on a test server. Um, so yeah, but I definitely learn by breaking it. And then, yeah. <laughs> and if you break it, you need to come to the ACK monthly meeting and let us know how you broke it. Yes, please let us know. <laughs> and if you fix it, let us know how you fixed it. <laughs> Karen, they, they blah, blah, Carolyn. <laughs> They are, um, they're on the third Wednesday, um, 
of the month at three o'clock Eastern. And somebody correct me if that's not right, because I don't have my calendar open. Thank you, Elizabeth. And if you join the listserv, you'll get the reminders as well. Yeah, I try to remember to CC the general listserv, but I sometimes forget. So, so yeah. Um, you also have your session tomorrow. Oh, um, yeah. Thank you. See, awesome. <laughs> See, I just like... I'm just like the name on the thing. Other people are what keeps me in line. Thank you. <laughs> so I wanted to point out, let me go over here. Um, there's two act specific sessions tomorrow. Um, one of them is speed up receiving with automated shipment notifications. Um, Bill Erickson is presenting on that one. And we actually, um, we had kind of talked about it in one of our previous monthly meetings. So um, if you're interested in that, I am. Um, that would be really great to go see what that looks like in hopefully in action or at least hear more about it from Bill. Um, and then at 3.30 tomorrow Eastern, um, Jennifer and I are doing a presentation on um, what we wish we knew then. So getting started with acquisitions, which is kind of sort of similar to what we had kind of talked about today, which is like things that might get you hung up or like tips or things like that. So, and we'll also do like a little bit of a demo as well. So that's at 3.30 tomorrow. And we'll be demoing using uh, a 3.9 server. So we'll be looking at the um, the new interfaces for Acadmin that came in 3.8. They're much prettier than the Dojo. Oh, awesome. Um, Andrea said that um, Ruth, and, Ruth and Andrea will also talk about a bit about Acadmin um, on Thursday at 11 a.m. So that's also good to put on your your schedule. schedule. Are we out of time, Elizabeth? Uh, yes, I think so. We have two minutes left. Oh, good. I managed to fill an hour. Awesome. <laughs> well, just in that last minute, really, like we've said it a few times, but if you're interested in acquisitions, you don't have to be using it. We answer any questions you might have if you come to the monthly meetings. Um, and, you know, we really like anybody who has any interest in acquisitions, please, uh, all are welcome. Yeah, and like Carolyn was saying earlier, she was like, I don't ever, I think, if I remember correctly, I don't ever have anybody else to talk to you really about this. That's how, you know, I think a lot of us feel. So it's really great to just put your heads together. So, yeah. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming. We made it to an hour. Good job, everyone. Um, so I appreciate everyone coming. Uh, the next... Uh, interest group uh, meeting, if I'm correct, is I think the 20th of July. Um, so hopefully we'll see some of you guys there. And thank you.